please subscribe to our channel, Pacific Front Untold, and be sure to leave a comment after watching a video. Prince Kanoe Fumimaro was born in Tokyo on October 12, 1891, to the ancient Fujiwara family. He lost both parents by the age of 14 and was raised by his uncle, Prince Tokugawa Basato. Kanoe studied communism and socialism at Kyoto Imperial University and was strongly influenced by the writings of Karl Marx, Leo Tolstoy, and Peter Kropotkin. After graduating from university, Kanoe was named a member of the House of Peers, the upper house of the imperial diet, and became a staff member of the Home Ministry a year later. In 1918, he published an essay titled Reject the Anglo-American-Centered Peace, where he argued that Western hypocrisy undermined democracy through racially discriminatory imperialism. In 1919, Kanoe attended the Paris Peace Conference as Gendo Sayoji Kinmochi's secretary. He was one of the Japanese diplomats who submitted the racial equality proposal to the League of Nations. Although it was supported by 11 out of the 17 delegates who voted for it, the proposal was ultimately overturned by U.S. President Woodrow Wilson. In September 1922, Kanoe joined the Kenkui Kai, the most powerful faction in the House of Peers, led by former Prime Minister Yamagata Aritomo. During this period, Kanoe helped establish universal male suffrage in Japan, which at that time was proposed by Prime Minister Kato Takaaki. Japanese politics evolved rapidly during the Taisho period, which saw the House of Peers distance itself from party influence. Kanoe left the Ken Kyui Kai in November 1927, and that same year became chief commissioner for Emperor Hirohito's coronation. In 1931, Kanoe became vice president of the House of Peers and the Privy Council, an advisory council to the emperor. Two years later, Kanoe was promoted to the presidency of the House of Peers. At the start of his career, Kanoe demonstrated political strength and competence. He had the knowledge, understanding, and strong sense of mission to be a good leader. However, his eventual shortcomings as prime minister would permanently damage his reputation. On June 4, 1937, Kanoe became prime minister of Japan. One month later, a skirmish occurred between Japanese and Chinese troops in Beijing, known as the Marco Polo Bridge Incident. By July 20th, the incident had sparked a full-scale conflict between Japan and China, known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. Although Kanoe initially opposed war with China, he took a firm stance toward Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist government and offered them harsh terms for peace. China must formally recognize Manchukuo, cooperate with Japan in fighting communism, permit the indefinite stationing of Japanese troops, and pay war reparations to Japan. In January 1938, when Chiang failed to respond to Japanese offers, Kanoe issued a statement that Japan no longer recognized the nationalist government. Later that year, Kanoe issued the New Order in East Asia Declaration, stating that Japan would reform China under a new government. Unable to bring the war in China to a decisive close, Kanoe resigned in January 1939, but was appointed again as Prime Minister in July 1940. During his second term, the government finalized plans to invade French Indochina and the Dutch East Indies and signed the Tripartite Pact with Germany and Italy and the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact. However, Kanoe only played a passive role in these decisions. In August 1940, when the army urged strong measures against the Dutch East Indies, Kanoe used ill health as an excuse to avoid choosing a course of action and did not recover until an official government policy was established. Kanoe was also against the Tripartite Pact, but was pressured by Army Minister Tojo Hideki and Foreign Minister Matsuoko Yosuke. Matsuoka also took the initiative in forming the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact, meeting with Joseph Stalin himself in Moscow. Two months later, Hitler broke the German-Soviet non-aggression pact by invading the Soviet Union. Matsuoka advocated for an invasion of the Soviet Union and caused tension in U.S.-Japan relations with his stubborn attitude toward negotiations. 
The Japanese government, including Emperor Hirohito, began viewing Matsuoka as a liability. To remove Matsuoka, Kanoe formed a third cabinet in July 1941. Despite Kanoe's attempts to restore U.S.-Japan relations, the U.S. froze Japanese assets and placed embargoes on several resources, including oil. Additionally, Kanoe failed to convince Tojo to withdraw troops from China and Indochina to meet American demands. On October 16, 1941, Kanoe resigned and Tojo succeeded him as prime minister. Two months later, Japan launched an attack on Pearl Harbor and declared war on the United States. Konoe continued to voice his objection to war after his resignation and even advised Emperor Hirohito to begin negotiations to end the war in February 1945. Konoe returned to the Japanese government during the American occupation. Konoe served in the first post-war cabinet under Prime Minister Prince Higashikuni Naruhiko. In October, days before the resignation of the Higashikuni cabinet, Kanoe was tasked to assist with the rewriting of the Japanese constitution. Kanoe preferred a gradual approach to constitutional reform and by late November had formed an outline listing 22 problems and concerns in the Meiji constitution. The main focus was on clarifying the emperor's authority, with Kanoe believing that the emperor should remain the superintendent of sovereignty but dependent on the support of the people. Put differently, the emperor's authority would remain similar to what it was defined in the Meiji constitution, only the new constitution would prevent abuses of power. Kanoe's outline also abolished the Privy Council, added basic rights of freedom to citizens, and granted greater power to the national diet. Kanoe was also a supporter of Emperor Hirohito's abdication. He was outspoken in his opinion that the emperor bore responsibility for failing to prevent war with the U.S., However, American General Douglas MacArthur had already taken steps to ensure Emperor Hirohito's safety. MacArthur believed that retaining the emperor as a political tool was advantageous for the U.S. Led by U.S. Army officer Bonner Fellers, Operation Blacklist successfully exonerated Hirohito and the rest of the imperial family of war crimes. Unfortunately, Konoe did not see his constitutional project come to fruition. In the last days of November 1945, information surrounding his role in the Second Sino-Japanese War came to light. On December 6, 1945, Konoe was informed of his indictment as a Class A war criminal, and ten days later, at the age of 54, Konoe committed suicide by potassium cyanide to avoid trial. He left a suicide note for his younger brother, which stated the following. I have made many political mistakes since the China incident. I feel deeply responsible, but I cannot bear to be tried as a so-called war criminal. I made it my greatest mission to resolve the war in China because I felt responsible for it. I came to the conclusion that the only way to resolve this was to reach an understanding with the U.S., and I made every effort to negotiate with them. It is unfortunate that I am now charged by the U.S. as a criminal. However, those who knew my intentions understand. I am sure that there are even some Americans who understand. The excitement and passion of the war, the excessive growth of the winners, the excessive subservience of the losers, the deliberate defamation and the rumored words and misunderstandings that are based on misunderstandings may someday regain their composure and return to normal. Only then will a judgment of justice be made in God's court. Matsumoto Joji a former cabinet minister, took over the role of drafting a new Japanese constitution. Matsumoto held a similar sentiment to Kanoe that the constitution did not require much change concerning the emperor's authority and only minor changes concerning human rights. However, the Americans rejected Matsumoto's draft for being too conservative. The Americans then took constitutional reform into their own hands. MacArthur formed a team led by senior army officers with law degrees including Milo Rowell and Courtney Whitney, to draft the Constitution. MacArthur's demands were much more radical than Kanoe and Matsumoto's ideas. Although the emperor was allowed to retain his throne, his authority over the people was fundamentally different. Unlike Kanoe's outline, the emperor would lose his authority and become subordinate to the Constitution and the Japanese people. 
It also included an article to renounce war forever and prohibit land, sea, or air forces. The new Japanese constitution, as written by the Americans, came into effect on May 3, 1947. Kanoe's political life was an embodiment of the flaws of the Meiji constitution. The military had overwhelming control of the government, with little civilian control over Japan's path to war. However, this does not mean that Kanoe can avoid responsibility for his actions. Despite initially being against a war with China, his failure to negotiate peace led to a prolonged war. His incompetence as a leader also led to failed negotiations with the U.S. and a war that he was opposed to. Many historians today consider Kanoe an incompetent leader responsible for war and atrocities, and in his country, he is viewed as an irresponsible and infamous figure responsible for Japan's downfall.